And welcome back to another Mark's Moment. This is about FERPTA, and we're doing an update from 2017. Can you believe it's that long? Well, FERPTA topic has been one of the biggest questions that we have in the office, so we wanted to come to you with more information since 2017. FERPTA, Foreign Investment and Real Estate Property Act of 1980, and then it was updated in 2016. If you're an investor, if you're a real estate uh, agent in South Florida, you gotta know about FERPTA because it's about foreign nationals owning property and now they're selling. And if you've been involved in the real estate market in South Florida, you know that the foreign nationals have made our tourism and have made real estate a wonderful thing for all of us. So first question with FERPTA, why do I care? Well, every single property has a seller and not every single property owner is a US citizen or a permanent green card holder, a permanent resident, right? And so we presume sometimes that they are, but and they sound like they have quote unquote American names, but that is not necessarily true. So we have to inquire. Every agent should be asking this question when they're taking a listing. Every buyer's agent, every investor should be asking the question when they're entering into a contract. And remember too, from a marketing standpoint, plenty of foreign investors have properties here and maybe their economy in their country is, is uh, challenging right now. Maybe they're looking to sell. So it may mean that you have an opportunity here to make some money. Again, FERPTA is for foreign nationals only and it is for a non-US citizen and a non-permanent green card holder. So if I say to you, are you a US citizen or a permanent green card holder? And you say, I have a tax ID number, eh, that's not the question. If you say, I have a social security number, Eh, that's not the question. So the question is US citizen, yes or no, permanent green card holder, yes or no, and then of course the requisite social security number or tax ID number that goes with those two questions only. So we have FERPTA, once we know we have FERPTA, we have three categories. Get out your pens and write them down. The first category is uh, 0 to 300,000. So people are buying property for under $300,000. The seller is a foreign national, FERPTA applies, and now we have a question. Do we withhold the 15% withholding for IRS? Yes, since 2016, remember, things have changed. And so it's 15% under 300,000 if the seller is a foreign national. And then once you answer that question, the next question is what is the buyer's intent? Because if the buyer signs an affidavit stating per IRS guidelines that they are going to live in the property or make a familiar use of that property within the first two years and not rent, and they're willing to sign the affidavit and the property is under $300,000, then no IRS withholding has to be withheld. If the buyers do not sign that affidavit under $300,000, then 15% has to be withheld. Category number two, 300,000 to a million. Now it's automatic FERPTA, but it depends on how much withholding, whether it's 15% or 10%. Again, the same thing happens. It's $500,000 property. Is our seller a foreign national? Answer is yes, automatic FERPTA. Now, what is the buyer's intent? If they fill out an intent to reside or a statement of res uh, to reside, and they fill it out, then we only have to hold back 10%. If they don't fill it out, we have to hold back 15%. Now wait to the end of the video to understand about the withholding. So that's category number two. First category, uh, first question rather, is it FERPTA? Yes, first category, zero to 300,000, 15% or nothing if they fill out the affidavit. Second category, 300,000 to a million, if they fill out the uh, affidavit, it's only 10% withholding. If they don't, it is 15% withholding. Third category, million and over. We would love for you all to have them. And a million and over is automatic 15% withholding. Doesn't matter the um, buyer's intent, okay? So we talk about withholdings. The questions that come up are, is it withholding of the proceeds? I'm sorry, is it withholding of the um, end proceeds after expenses, is it withholding after capital gains, all the different questions that may come up. None of it is relevant. It is 
15% or 10% right off the top of the sales price, okay? And so you have to remember that. It's made uh, right to the IRS and we have different ways to whether we remit it or not, which we'll talk about in a moment. So we've gone over FERPTA, we've gone over the three categories that apply and the amounts that apply, and we now know that it is straight off the top. Now remember, I'm not an accountant, I'm not an attorney. You need to consult an accountant or an attorney that does um, FERPTA withholding as well because you gotta get it right, it's very important. Now also remember that it is not 100% that you're going to have to pay all the money that's withheld, just like with any accounting, you work with an accountant and there's usually amounts of money that you have to pay and amounts of money that you get back. So let's talk about that amount of money. If you work with an accountant prior to the sale of the home, okay, and we work simultaneously with that accountant to the day of closing, and they, rem they remit to the IRS your FERPTA package that is requesting a certificate from the IRS, if all that is done simultaneously at the day of closing, then with that confirmation package that has been overnighted to the IRS, we could then hold the withholding indefinitely until a decision is met. A decision is reached and then we get the certificate and per the certificate from the IRS, we pay what it says. We give the IRS their money and we give back the money to the seller. That is everything done in advance and then we have proof that it was sent in. Why is that helpful to the person that is um, having the money withheld? Well, now the IRS may take 90 days to respond or less, and they say, here you go, Mark, give us 5,000 and give the seller back 25,000 or whatever the amount is. Well, if I have the money, I could do that immediately within the next day and send it out to the parties and be done. But if I am not holding the money and the IRS is holding the money because I remitted it at closing because I didn't know you were working with an accountant, now you get the decision, but now your accountant has to request the refund from the IRS, which could take another third, uh, which could take up to another 90 days or so, if not longer. So there is a benefit of being proactive as the seller to work with an accountant ahead of time. Um, of all the categories that we spoke about, the addition to this video, in addition to how much um, conversation and how many questions we get about FERPTA all the time, is LLCs, limited liability companies. Why is this important? Because in our business, in real estate, people take title in LLCs and corporations and so forth. But the caveat to FERPTA, the additional item that you must remember, is that if the seller is a sole member limited liability company, FERPDUC could potentially also apply. Remember what I said, sole member LLC. I didn't say multi-member. If you're a sole member LLC, and I'm not an accountant, I'm not an attorney, but think about it. Typically in sole member LLCs, if they have any income, they typically would attach it to their, um, with their taxes every year. But if you're a foreign national, you don't necessarily file taxes in um, the state of Florida or in the United States. And so therefore, that's why sole member LLCs also fall under the category for potential FERPTA withholding. So some people might want to do some research about that and speak to an accountant as to whether or not that could affect them. So to summarize this updated FERPTA review, we have our regular three categories, zero to 300,000, 300 to a million, and a million and over. Zero to 300,000 is 15% withholding or nothing if the affidavit is completed. 300 to a million is 10% or 15% if the affidavit is completed. A million and over is automatically 15%. When done in advance, we could potentially hold the money at the time of closing indefinitely when done in advance with an accountant. If it is not done in advance, and sometimes that happens, then all we do is remit the funds that we've withheld at the time of closing with the requisite forms. Both buyers and sellers do have to fill out forms, and you might say, why does a buyer have to fill out something? Well, it's for their protection. Because remember, if we 
hold the money and we send it to the IRS and for some reason it doesn't have a form and it gets lost and there is a lien against the property, the seller could be out of the country. Now the buyer has the headache of dealing with that. So that's why even though FERPTA is about the seller, it's also about protecting the buyer. If you have any questions about FERPTA or you need an accountant, please call us at the office. Please make sure that you subscribe to the link below. And again, if you have any questions, let me know. This is Mark from Mark's Minutes. Thank you. We'll see you at the closing table.